Ahoy there, history enthusiasts and lovers of the bazaar. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we embark on a journey to unravel the infamous and elusive world of titanic conspiracies. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh no, not another cheesy retelling of the tragic tale. But fear not, for we shall dive deep into the depths of history with a new twist and a touch of skepticism. The day is April 14th, 1912. The RMS Titanic, a behemoth of luxury, embarks on her maiden voyage from Southampton, England, to the land of the American dream, New York City. With more than 2,200 eager souls aboard, ranging from the wealthiest individuals to hopeful immigrants seeking a fresh start, the Titanic was destined for greatness, or so it seemed. But alas, fate had other plans. An iceberg struck, and the ship met its watery grave in the icy depths of the North Atlantic Ocean. Over 1,500 lives were lost, forever etching this tragedy onto the pages of history. You have probably seen the movie Titanic and cried your eyes out unless you lack emotion, so you probably have a pretty good idea on what the Titanic was really like. But what you may not have known is the cloud of uncertainty regarding the details of the ship's fateful voyage. Side note, if you haven't seen the movie directed by James Cameron, I highly suggest it. Spoiler alert, almost everybody dies. You see, the Titanic sinking didn't just capture public attention. It ignited a flurry of conspiracy theories that continue to perplex us to this day. Some claim that what the Titanic hit was not a towering iceberg, but rather low-lying pack ice. Pack ice refers to large masses or sheets of floating ice that have been compressed and jammed together due to wind and ocean currents. It typically forms in polar or subpolar regions where the temperature is cold enough for seawater to freeze. Pack ice can vary in thickness and extent, ranging from loose and slushy ice to solid, densely packed flows. These ice formations pose significant challenges for navigation, as they can obstruct the passage of ships and present hazards to marine activities. The term pack ice derives from the way it packs together, creating a dense and formidable barrier across the icy seas. It'd be easy to speculate that pack ice was the root cause of the ship's untimely demise, and who better to support this theory than Captain L. M. Collins? Captain Collins, a seasoned expert in ice navigation, based his conclusions on witness statements and his own experience. He argued that the lookout spotted not haze as commonly believed, but rather a strip of pack ice on the horizon, a few miles ahead of the ship. Now imagine this, a frigid night, a calm sea, and an optical phenomenon known to ice navigators distorting the appearance of objects near the waterline. Witness descriptions vary. Some saw ice towering above like a frozen skyscraper, while others perceived it as low in the water. It's a classic case of perception is everything, isn't it? The phenomenon is known as looming, or superior mirage. Looming is an optical effect caused by the bending of light as it passes through layers of cold air near the surface of the water. In extremely cold conditions, where there is a stark temperature difference between the air and the water, the light rays can be refracted in such a way due to the changes in the index of refraction that objects near the waterline appear elevated or magnified. This can create the illusion that objects are much taller or larger than they actually are, including the lights appearing significantly higher above the surface. Looming can be particularly disorienting for ice navigators, as it can affect the perception of distances and object heights, potentially leading to misjudgments and hazards in icy waters. But let's dive deeper into the abyss, shall we? One theory suggests that the Titanic didn't just graze the iceberg, but executed a dramatic turn, causing her rudder to hard over, crushing the starboard side into the icy behemoth. So, was it an iceberg or misidentified pack ice? Did the Titanic's dramatic maneuver seal its fate? These are the questions that haunt the deepest corners of our historical consciousness. Regardless of the answer, there's still much more left unanswered. For decades, researchers have debated the cause and mechanics of the Titanic's breakup, Early accounts painted a picture of the ship assuming a steep angle before sinking, a view that persisted even after the wreck's discovery in 1985. However, in 2005, a new theory emerged, challenging the severity of the ship's angle during the breakup. This alternative theory proposed that the ship's aft expansion joint, a crucial structural element, played a role in the breakup and contributed to its faster sinking. Support for this theory came from examining the wreckage of the Titanic's sister ship, Britannic, However, a subsequent computer simulation suggested that the expansion joints were not essential for the hull's support, and simply opened as the hull flexed or broke. The 
The quest for answers continues as experts analyze every fragment of evidence. Another theory suggests that the Titanic may have partially grounded on the iceberg shell, damaging the keel and underbelly, which in turn led to further hull fractures. But wait, for amidst the wreckage, an unusual tale emerges, a story interwoven with ancient curses and eerie coincidences. William Steed, a British editor and a passenger on the Titanic, was known for his belief in early 20th century spiritualism. He had been consumed with a tale of a cursed mummy wreaking havoc in London. On board the ill-fated ship, Steed shared his tale of the mummy's curse with fellow passengers, unaware of the fate that awaited them. As the ship sank, one survivor recounted Steed's story to the media, and soon, the tale of the mummy's curse spread like wildfire. Some even linked this curse to the Egyptian artifacts carried by survivor Margaret Brown, who was delivering them to a museum in Denver. Yet, in truth, the so-called unlucky mummy remained safe and sound at the British Museum. So no mummy was ever loaded onto the Titanic. The Mummy's Curse, like many myths, played on the anxieties and fears of colonists. It was a story born from a mix of coincidence, sensationalism, and the haunting legacy of plundered lands. As we continue our journey through the web of titanic myths and legends, the narrative becomes even more bizarre and construed with theories and speculations being tossed around. Today, we confront a claim that suggests that the ship's number, when viewed in the mirror, spelled out a chilling message of doom. But as always, let's uncover the truth hidden beneath the surface. According to this myth, Catholic employees of the Belfast-based company Harland & Wolf, the builders of the Titanic, were said to be distressed by the ship's number, 390904, which, when viewed in the mirror, seemed to spell out, No Pope. Did this alleged sign of bad luck foretell the ship's tragic fate? Let us unravel this mystery. Titanic historian Walter Lord, in his meticulous research, received letters from people in Ireland recounting this no pope story. Starting in the 1950s, however, as author Burns wisely pointed out in his book, The Night Lives On, there was no such number associated with the Titanic. In reality, the hall number painted on the ship was 401, the same as its yard number in Harlan and Wolf. Its board of trade number was 131. 428. Even if one of these numbers had spelled out no pope, it would have been nothing more than a coincidence. But here's the fascinating twist. There weren't any Catholic workers at Harland and Wolf to be upset by this alleged message. You see, Harland and Wolf had driven away its Catholic employees in the late 1800s. By the turn of the 20th century, the company had gained a reputation for exclusively employing Protestants. This notion of Catholic workers being distressed by the ship's number is simply unfounded. Now, let's confront a tale that is so elaborate and audacious that it challenges the very foundations of history. Brace yourselves as we explore the theory presented by Robin Gardner in his book, Titanic, The Ship That Never Sank. According to Gardner, the Titanic sinking was not a tragic accident, but an insurance scam orchestrated by the ship's owners, the International Mercantile Marine Group, controlled by the influential J.P. Morgan. Gardner suggests that the ship that sank was in fact Titanic's sister ship, Olympic, disguised as the Titanic. But as with any theory, we must scrutinize the evidence and separate fact from fiction. Researchers Bruce Beveridge and Steve Hall in their book Olympic and Titanic, The Truth Behind the Conspiracy, challenge many of Gardner's claims. Author Mark Chernside also raises serious questions about the switch theory. Moreover, British historian Gareth Russell dismisses it as painfully ridiculous, highlighting the practical impossibility of swapping the sister ships considering their significant interior architectural design differences. But the conspiracy web continues to entangle us. Some believe that the Titanic sinking was not a mere accident or an insurance scam, but rather a deliberate act to eliminate opposition to the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank. Among the wealthy individuals on board were John Jacob Astor IV, Benjamin Guggenheim, and Isidore Strauss, who were allegedly opposed to the establishment of a U.S. central bank. Conspiracy theorists suggest that J.P. Morgan, the influential financer and key player in the creation of the Federal Reserve, orchestrated the sinking of the Titanic to silence these men. They claim that Morgan arranged for them to board the ship and then ensured its demise. However, there is no evidence supporting this alleged opposition to Morgan's banking ideas. Let us remember that conspiracy theories, while captivating, require concrete evidence to stand the test of scrutiny. 
even if it does seem pretty strange that a man with the power and the motive would suddenly cancel their voyage for seemingly no good reason, we cannot say for certain that J.P. Morgan orchestrated the tragic demise of the Titanic and its passengers. But wait, the plot thickens. Perhaps what I believe to be one of the most uncanny details regarding the wreck of the Titanic is the jaw-dropping resemblance it has with a novel written 14 years prior in 1898. One of the most astounding parallels lies in the names of these vessels themselves. Morgan Robertson, in his novel Futility, named his ship the Titan, echoing the Titanic's iconic name. Wait, Morgan Robertson? J.P. Morgan? Hmm. Anyways, the coincidences don't end there. In both stories, these massive ships collided with an iceberg on their starboard side during the chilly month of April, approximately 900 miles away from New York. However, while the fictional tragedy occurs in adverse weather conditions, the Titanic was sailing through what was considered normal weather at the time. The Titan embarked on a voyage from New York to Southampton, while the Titanic sailed in the opposite direction. Both ships were hailed as unsinkable before tragedy struck. However, the fictional Titan sank rapidly. Whereas the Titanic endured for about three hours after the iceberg collision. Another remarkable resemblance lies in the design of the ships. Both the Titan and the Titanic featured a system of watertight compartments intended to enhance their safety. Furthermore, their physical dimensions were strikingly similar, with the Titan measuring just over 880 feet in length, which is not far from the Titanic's impressive 800-foot length. Both liners boasted three propellers and two masts. Yet, amidst these similarities, we must remember that futility is a work of fiction. Although both stories share uncanny resemblances, we must not confuse fact with imagination. So now that we have discussed potential theories and conspiracies that contributed to this tragic event, I would like to know what you think in the comments. Do you believe that it was a freak accident or an orchestrated ploy with sinister intentions? Regardless of what you may like to think, the Titanic's legacy will live on for generations, captivating the imagination and pulling the heartstrings of many to come. Join us next time, my cryptic watchers, as we continue to navigate the mysterious waters we know as reality. We shall uncover more astonishing tales and separate fact from fiction. Until then, let us be vigilant in our pursuit of truth. Thanks for watching, and stay curious. And if you have any video recommendations that you would like to see, please let me know in the comments.